What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. We're going to talk about a few different horror topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about Predator Badlands, a Christopher Nolan horror movie, Scream 7, Happy Death Day 3, and we'll be talking about Carrie. So just start off here with Carrie. Deadline reported this big My Flanagan news this week. It says, after scoring the big deal at the Toronto Film Festival with Neon for Tiff's People's Choice Award winner, The Life of Chuck, director Mike Flanagan and Stephen King are right back at it. The Dish hears their next collaboration will be Carrie, this time in an eight-episode series for Amazon. Flanagan will be the showrunner. The 1974 novel put the young Arthur King on the map and also boistered his mouth or his worth as an author whose genre storytelling was most translatable to the big screen. Now, I will not say I'm excited for this because at the moment, I feel I'm all carried out. However, Mike Flanagan is a Stephen King genius to me. I suspect the cast will be a mix of stars he's worked with before. Like always, I wish him the best on this show. But yeah, Carrie isn't something I find all that exciting right now. I think we've had, what, three iterations of this so far? recently uh and with just with the way a lot of stuff is inspired by carrie these days and the way it's been sprinkled in shows like pretty little liars original sin and just some other things i, I don't want to see carrie right now i do trust it'll be more compelling than the chloe grace moretz remake in 2013 no shade to her because i think she's a tremendous actress but that film in and of itself is gonna look like a complete train wreck compared to whatever mike flanagan cooks up i'm just that confident in him he's yet to deliver a bust even if i'm not excited for the carry show i trust that over time the more i learn i'll become excited and i'm gonna check it out anyway because it's mike flanagan but let me know if you guys are looking forward to this new iteration of carry some might even argue this is a bit much because the book is only what 200 pages so eight episodes for 200 pages are you gonna be stretching it out beyond 200 pages it just seems whatever I, I trust Mike. <laughs> now let's talk about Happy Death Day 3. So Christopher Landon circled back to his Happy Death Day 3 project that we know is in limbo and isn't really showing any signs of life. He gave comments at New York Comic Con recently about it. He said, I could say that I wrote a treatment. I didn't write the script because I wouldn't write a script unless it was a sure thing. So he's also been referencing how he doesn't know if this will happen or won't happen. He said, here's the cool thing. It's a bigger movie and it's not on the same day as the previous two films. That's the biggest spoiler I've put out there. So I guess he hasn't really talked about that before. He hasn't talked about how the third film wouldn't be set on the same day as the previous two films. He did say, I can promise that if it never happens, I will just put out the treatment I wrote so everybody can just read what was going to happen. So pretty much more the same, but I don't recall him ever sharing that last part before. If three never happens, we'll at least get the treatment he has so we can have some sense of closure with Happy Death Day. I feel that the general consensus surrounding the sequel is that it was a dumb move to drop that movie around Valentine's Day instead of October like the first one, but whatever. I love both films and would still like to see a Freaky Death Day crossover someday down the road if we're lucky. Now let's talk about Scream 7. Just to circle back to the McKenna Grace rumor really quick. A few of you commented that she's been logging the films on her Letterbox account and shout out to UK for sending me screenshots of what is allegedly McKenna's account. And I'm not going to be sharing that. Sure enough, she has been logging the screen movies recently. Could be something. It could be nothing. She did make it clear that Scream is her favorite movie. And perhaps she was just revisiting them. And it coincidentally lines up with the rumors surrounding her casting. But 9 says out of 10, all the things point in the direction of her being in the movie. But we haven't heard anything official. So don't be shocked if she actually isn't in it but don't be shocked if she is in it there's just a lot of signs pointing towards mckenna being down for scream 7 right now now let's talk about matthew lillard he was on the drew barrymore show recently and hyped up the stew is alive narrative once again he didn't actually give a statement as much of it was a question that's the clip i saw and it was giving that energy it was more of a question he said Stu is definitely alive right and it's like he's asking for confirmation and then the crowd starts cheering he didn't say Stu was alive matthew himself isn't even the person who will get to decide that he doesn't own Stu mocker i hope all of you out there realize that he does not own this character this all came after they were joking about casey becker surviving being gutted and hung from a tree a friend of mine shared a theory with me about a ghost face cult idea recently so since matthew lillard can easily return as Stu without being alive I'm going to flesh out my friend's theory a bit and how you could include Stu. So during Scream 7, you could have Ghostface using the voice of dead victims 
in this case, one of them can be Stu. Since the technology is believable now, like I stated, Stu can be one of those voices, uses it to taunt Sydney. Scream 7 can have five or six killers. Each one is related to a past victim. It's a group led by Leslie Mocker. She started the group in 2022. And after Vince died, and she's convinced all of these people that are related to past victims that Sydney does not deserve her family since she's the reason some of ours are dead. This would explain why Ghostface taunted her with the voice of Stu and other victims because the Ghostface reveal would include relatives that have gathered around to take her out because they think she doesn't deserve the peace she's had. She doesn't deserve her family. And they think that if they eliminate her, all of the stuff surrounding Ghostface will be put to bed. A simplistic way to bring Sydney back into the fold. It's not my ideal first choice, as you all know. <laughs> From the theory I've shared about Tatum and whatever her name is up being Taylor Tatum, whatever that is. But if this is the way they go down the path of using a cult, I'm just saying this is how you could get Stu involved in it. But bringing him back to life, no, it's just absolutely ridiculous at this stage. And it doesn't even make sense if you're someone who took issue with the amount of times Chad was stabbed and he's alive. And yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Let's talk about Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan might finally be giving us a horror film. The rumor at the moment is it's going to be a period piece set in 1920s with a vampire or with vampires. Tom Holland and Matt Damon are already confirmed the star. Yes, Tom Holland from Spider-Man, not the one who directed Child's Play. I will cross my fingers that this is a good movie. I, like many of you listening, have been wanting to see Christopher Nolan do a horror film. I've been wanting this for quite a while. If you're someone who saw my tweets yesterday, it does sound like Sinners. It does because of the fact that I have all the details about the, the story of Sinners and knowing what we know about Sinners from what's just been released to the public. Sounds like it's going to be similar to Sinners. Not that two awesome filmmakers can't give us two awesome period pieces with vampires. That's just the first thing that came to mind. So, by the end of it all, I do see Christopher Nolan putting together a better film than Ryan Coogler. That's just me and going off Nolan's track record. But are you looking forward to a horror film by Christopher Nolan? Again, this is just rumored. It's not confirmed yet. It could end up being something completely different, but I hope it is a horror film. He's long overdue to do a horror film. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is Predator Badlands. Predator Badlands is going to be released in theaters on November 7th, 2025. Now, Disney's clearly learning their lessons from Prey because that should have been a theatrical release itself. A few people saw it in theaters because of the press screenings and other things that went on with the premiere. But keep in mind, this upcoming Batlands film is going to be set in the future and it's supposed to follow a pair of twins battling the Alja. So hopefully with this film, it is another step in the right direction. I thought that Prey was very well done. It wasn't like the best thing out there, but it also wasn't that poor of a movie either. So we'll see what comes to Predator Badlands. It's supposed to have Ellie Fanning in it, starring as the twins. So let me know what you guys think about all of this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notification. You can never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all of my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.